And, and so let's just talk about some characteristics of this stuff because uh, I, I think it'll help us kind of understand how it affects the plant and how it affects microbes, okay? Glyphosate has two patents, okay? The first one is it is a chelator, which means because glyphosate is phosphate based and there are three negative valences to it, it likes to grab onto positive things. That's just its chemical reaction, okay? What it likes to grab onto is positive compounds. Well, positive compounds happen to play an important role in the plant. The other thing that it's patented as is a very potent antibiotic. There we go. I got too many, too many letters in the wrong place. Okay, <clears throat> which means that it kills microorganisms. Okay, so <clears throat> what they initially used glyphosate for was to demineralize pipes that got filled up with hard water. Okay, because your calcium magnesium salts tend to fill in your pipes in time and <coughs> close off the water flow. And they used glyphosate as a method of pulling those minerals away from the pipe and opening up the pipes again. It's very effective at doing this. Okay, so how it works in a plant. Okay, I have a plant sitting in here. Let's draw this wonderful plant sitting out here. Okay, and <clears throat> glyphosate is works on the plant's secondary metabolism, metabolism systems, metabolic systems. What it means is the first thing it does, it goes into the plant and it starts pulling minerals away from the plant's enzymes so that it shuts down functions. Okay, that's what it's doing. No different in a pipe than in a plant. It's gonna grab magnesium, manganese, copper, zinc. Glyphosate has a tremendous attraction for manganese. Okay, now manganese is important for a lot of things. So as it shuts, pulls these minerals away from the enzymes, the plant begins to shut down. And so it, st it stops, it begins to destruct the plant's operating and immune systems. Now, glyphosate by itself cannot kill a plant. You put a plant in sterile soil, glyphosate can stunt it, but it can't kill it. There are two actions required when you use glyphosate to kill a plant. The first one is if you have to shut it down, shut down its defense systems. The second thing is glyphosate is systemic. We talked about this at lunch, which means that it goes throughout the plant and then part of it is pushed out the root systems. Plants put out between 25 to 45 percent of the sugars they make out the root systems to feed biology. Okay? When the glyphosate goes out the root system, it begins to kill beneficial microbes. It requires the assistance of a soil pathogen to kill the plant with glyphosate. Particularly fusarium, pythium, rhizoc. Okay, those fungal type pathogens 
are the secondary mechanism that assists glyphosate in killing a plant. That's why you don't see it instantly die. That's why it takes time to get the pathogen assistance to do this. The pathogen, if the plant is healthy, the, pla the pathogen doesn't have a mechanism to come in and take the plant out. It has some defenses. And so how glyphosate works is it shuts down the defenses, the pathogen can come in, attack the root system, and we can kill a plant this way. It's very effective, works very well. Here's the problem. In the soil, I have two groups of bacteria. I have good guys and I have bad guys. Okay, we come back to this, it only takes one-tenth of one part per million to start taking out my beneficial microbes. It's not very much. This is way less than the, the label rate. Okay? It takes four thousand times that to start killing your pathogens. So it's a very selective antibiotic. It is actually a pathogen promoter because it doesn't kill pathogens at your label rate. It stimulates them. That's why it works. This work, this research was done by Dr. Don Huber. It's happened over and over and over again. They've repeated this thing dozens and dozens of times. Purdue University. An amazing, amazing plant pathologist. They did this research where you could take a plant, put it in sterile soil, and squirt it with glyphosate. And yes, it stunted the plant, but they wouldn't die. When you put them in soil with regular microorganisms and you sprayed it with glyphosate, then in time the plant would die. But if you took a fungicide, after you sprayed the plant with glyphosate and put a fungicide in there, the plant stopped dying. Because then it killed the second mechanism that took the plant out. Now glyphosate doesn't go away. The industry want to, will want to tell you that it's harmless, you can drink it, it goes away in your soil like magic, and, and it doesn't. You know, what we talked about earlier, we have higher and higher levels of glyphosate residue in our plants because it stays in our soil. Now we use it and, and it's, a very, it's been very effective against taking out weeds. But the problem is, is we're actually stimulating these bad groups in our soils. You'll have, you'll have within days of applying glyphosate, you can have a 500% increase in fusarium in your soil. Now what kind of problems does fusarium cause? All kinds of vomitoxin in your grain, okay? And when you get vomitoxins too high, you can't sell your grain. Those are two species of fusarium. Maybe I don't want to stimulate these guys. Okay? You have all of these fungal pathogens that stimulate off of this compound. Because what we did is we removed the good guys that kept them in check. That's the whole problem here is, is nature has no voids. Okay? There's always something in the space. So if I, this is my environment. Let's just say this is my soil my gut, they're all the same. I want to maintain a huge I want to maintain a huge population of good guys and a very 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 small population of bad guys. Okay? And this is the way nature does it. Okay? Now bad guys actually have a role in nature. They take out sick plants. 
That's how nature does this. That's their role, is to remove sick plants. Because one, sick plants will never provide the basis of nutrition for higher life forms. So what do we grow plants for? Something's usually going to eat them. If the plant is deficient, the higher life forms don't have the nutrition. They're not going to survive. Okay, they're not going to maintain health. The next one is, is it refines the gene pool. Okay, <clears throat> and so nature doesn't, nature doesn't tolerate subnormal stuff in the gene pool. It, it weeds it out. We think that's very harsh because we have to save everything. But that is not nature's way. And so what happens here is when, when we manage these balance of microbes, whether it's in us or in our soils, everything that goes into us or into our soil has a microbial effect. Everything. You guys have to look at us like we are nothing more than biological generators, chemical generators. That's all. We are run by all of this chemistry and all of this microbiology. And everything that goes in from, from water to cider to nuts to cinnamon rolls to statin drugs, everything alters biology. Sugar will push certain microbes. Proteins push certain microbes. Oils push, push certain microbe growth. And so if we have French fry and, and pot pie or, or uh, hostess Twinkie diets and all that kind of stuff, we're going to push a group of microbes in our system that then produce our nutrient compounds or our toxic compounds. Glyphosate is one of these compounds that's notorious for quickly rebalancing biology populations because it takes out the good guys without taking out the bad guys. And so when we feed plants that have glyphosate in them, they're restructuring the gut microflora balances. When we spray glyphosate on our soil, we're rebalancing our soil microorganism populations. We're down in the good guys, up in the bad guys. We're going to have more disease issues. Okay? And then as we alter the biology populations, we intensify weed pressure. Now what nature has done is says, oh, guess what? We do not have, now we have weed that are completely resistant to glyphosate. Okay? Can't kill them now with glyphosate. And so the mechanism is the glyphosate still stunts the plant, but the plant has figured out different chemistry so the pathogens can't get to it anymore. Okay? Plants sometimes have three or four hundred ways of making compounds to do certain things. It's like, well, I unplug this hallway, I'll go around it. They'll figure it out in time because weeds are there to fix the mineral and the biological balances in soils. They're not there to torment you. They do, but when our soils get out of balance, weeds come to readjust it. Now think about this. Some weeds will put down very shallow roots, and what they're doing is they're picking up phosphate, because phosphate does not go deep into your soil. It's very reactive, right Abe? won't go down deep, it immobilizes, stays on top, and so you have all of your broad-based weeds are picking up those minerals near the top. They'll bring them in, resolubilize them, and put them in a plant available form. Your deep tap roots are picking up your heavier minerals. So you got your, your trace minerals and your calcium. Minerals are like BBs and feathers. The light ones float and the heavy ones go down. So you have all these minerals that stratify into different zones in your soils. How weeds do this is they send a gigantic root down there, tap into those heavier ones, they pull them up in their bodies, put them in the plant. When they die, they redistribute minerals from way down here to way up here. Now, this is a perfect system. If you have 
a couple hundred million years to wait out the process. Nature will fix that soil. We're a little bit impatient because we're going farming next week, so we're going to go nuke everything. So what we do is we go force the readjustment of the biology. We don't care about the minerals, and we just go nuke the weed, and then we go in and plant behind it. Okay, that's one way of doing it. But what it does is it causes these imbalances that they just get worse. It's like pushing a snowball uphill. Eventually, you can't push it any farther. Nature's going to let it roll back over top of you. Okay, so we can go about things the wrong way just so long. Because nature is always going to win. We will never outsmart nature with a synthetic product trying to fix a biological problem. We are not smart enough to do this.